Rimrims, survivors, connoisseurs of the fun gussy, welcome to the vaults. This damn vault. And first and foremost, a name for this damn vault. My favorite suggestion was Chef's Folly. Uh, spelt correctly, though. Because this vault, though a blessing, and though one day a sanctuary, a haven, it may be, it's doing more damage to us than the fungoids ever have. A life-threatening degree of pollution. Darkness. Isolation. A lack of cold. A lack of food. A lack of facilities. But today, all of that changes. Today, we take control of this vault, and we take control of our own destiny. So we have all the building blocks of saving the world. Of chef's dream coming true. And I was thinking to myself earlier a little bit about the end goal, right? When we are established well in this vault, maybe when we get a lot of people, maybe when we've cured a lot of people, we find consistent ways to make medicines. But when we have good armor and weapons, and we don't have to worry so much about the occasional bite or swipe from one of the fungoids, when we have non-lethal weapons, we can take them alive. Maybe one day we build a city tailored to the capture, the quarantine, and the curing of the mushroom people. Maybe we'll drown in an unstoppable tsunami of vomit, thanks to Mariana being hideously ugly. I love the idea of our current four eventually, not, not retiring, but being the leaders of the colony each with their own strength, right? Will coordinating everything, Mariana being the expert on the fungoids. She kind of has a lot of experience. Kai with the research and Timon out there in the world maybe leading the forces that are going to do the looting. This man knows a thing or two about getting into places or getting out of places. We can have like eight different squads out on the planet at the same time with vehicles and convoys, bringing back all the loot and building our own proper stronghold. But this is a good start, I think. A slippy start, but a good start. Let's get these bloody chunks moved. Let's get those out of the way. Let's get the sandstone out of the way. Let's start getting stuff put into stockpiles and just tidying it up. Making this place actually livable would be a fantastic start. Let's not worry about taking shit apart like that. The top part of the base is basically uninhabitable, right? So I think we'll move this back down for the timing so that we can at least cook some meals. I'll bring a table down here, or maybe we'll just build the table down here in hindsight. Slowly, eventually, we'll get to the top part of the vault. Just not today. Well, not anytime soon. And now Tim has fallen down to Toxic Builder, but I think our top priority, I'm going to assume direct control a lot today, I think our top priority is let's get those gas masks built. I saw some people suggest that the gas masks don't work against pollution, which is just straight up wrong. Oh my god, in fact, I think the gas mask might be the only way we can actually get around the vault safely. Where did we get 17 advanced components? Have they been there all along? They're all along in yesterday's episode. How would you look at that? <laughs> it's really hard to keep track of what we have and haven't got because we haven't got it in the stockpile yet, but we're working on it. It's all good. Tool cabinet up in the master bedroom. You know what? I'm not going to question it. I've already said the word fungusy once today, so that's nothing to do with me. Just don't know what kind of tools you need in the bedroom, okay? Probably not the same kind of tools you'd use on a gas mask, admittedly. One gas mask. That alone is a game changer. Because hopefully now, when they sleep, they'll lose more toxic build than they gain during the day, because it's minus 80%. Oh god, trait changed. Now, we had this before when Mariana became an optimist. Mariana gave the trait absent-minded. Oh my god, is this the fungus rot? Bear in mind, over time, the more she's infected, the, the, the less of her humanity she keeps. Oh no, what did she lose, though? She kept optimist. She now just has absent-minded couch potato. What became... Absent-minded is probably a better question. Certainty loss factor times 50% ago is not a big deal, but I'm choosing to interpret that as uh, losing her humanity. It's the fungus taking over. We've already tidied this up loads, though, compared to where we left off yesterday and compared to what we did yesterday. It just, just bear with me a little longer, okay? This is going to be such a nice base. And this one goes to Chef Will, because him and Tim and are suffering more than anyone else. I'll try and make everybody one, though. It's going to be useful for caravanning out, you know, because we're not going to be in the vault forever. We'll, we'll probably leave to go get some resources at some point because we haven't got a huge amount of steel. Chef, don't do anything because I have a gift for you somewhere. What are they, oh, you haven't finished it yet. Okay, stand here patiently and wait. Don't move. I'm hoping that will solve... Oh, there was another one right there. That's okay. Kai can have this one. Now, a lot of people very sensibly ask, sure, you can clean up the pollution, but where are you going to put it? We could just dump it out the door because there's plenty of room for the environment to soak it up. I wonder if we could put it in the vault slingshot. I presume it wouldn't work. But as far as I recall, these allow you to put anything in, right? Yeah, I mean, you can fill it with chunks. Why can't I fill it with waste packs? Send it to another vault. And yeah, I agree with those of you who said get someone tidying up. It's Mariana's fault there's so much vomit everywhere, so she's on vomit sweeping juicy. And dare I say it, this place is starting to look kind of okay. It's coming together a little bit. Oh, Sev, what happened? Oh my god, even though we put them in the coma, the aggression spores still killed them. 
I didn't think that would happen. And even then, the aggression spores aren't stopped by Deathless. That's it. They just die. Oh, God, Sev, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but your death has, has funded so much science. Okay, okay, so we know that for my, my quarantine idea, if we are going to do that, if we are going to pursue it, we need full-on crypto sleep caskets. We need something that would just freeze them and stop all bodily functions. But what if there's someone else who would benefit from the coma? We, we've seen it before. Mariana is in constant pain. Her skin is rotting. She vomits bile. She is in a horrible situation, ignoring the fact that she's also telepathic and shares a, a, a hive mind with every other one of the fungus people. Every day she's suffering. Everyone around her is suffering. I, I totally understand that she would probably volunteer to be put into into that same coma until we can get the cure. Because right now she's not she, she hasn't got a good life. Ignoring the fact that she is a rotting mushroom person slowly losing her mind. This is not good. Like this doesn't even work as a colonist. Now because of Sev, we know that we can we can effectively stop them, shut them down entirely, but because Mariana doesn't have the aggression spores, she has nothing to worry about. Maybe this is what Sev died for put Mariana in that coma, stop her suffering, stop her losing any more of her humanity, losing any more of her skills, and then bring her back when we've got a cure. And a lot of people have suggested this, but it really does make sense now that I've thought about it. So I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to do it. I think I'm all right with that. Rest now, Mariana. You've had a hard few weeks. This has been an impossible year for you, filled with suffering and hearing the thoughts and screams of other mushroom people. Rest now. And when we wake you up, you will be back to the person that you remember being. No more mushrooms, only Mariana. I'm taking your gun. We might need that for someone else who joins us eventually. In fact, we're taking all your clothes. We may need those. She's in a crypto sleep suspender. She doesn't need a gas mask anymore. She's, she's completely safe. And a parting gift for Chef Will. Mariana's beloved jetpack. She had that from day one. That was what her randomly generated character just had equipped. She loved that jetpack. And my god, Chef Will is going to use it. He's going to use it for good, damn it. Maybe it'll save his life. She can still help him, even while she's in that coma. And there we have it, our three main characters. I'm hoping we can get some new permanent recruits soon. Tim and the Builder, Kai the Researcher, and Will the Social Man. The Leader. Who admittedly hasn't really got a huge amount of useful skills in the apocalypse. What am I saying? He's the one keeping everyone alive with his fantastic meals. Packaged love meals we really want to prevent people eating. Because when we caravan out, because we're going to need some more steel soon, I think. When we caravan out, we'll we'll be relying on those. I was thinking about this earlier. What we need is some way to get outside. Not only so we can send transport pods in the case of an emergency, but also so that we could potentially one day build a helicopter. We're nowhere near, right? We haven't done any vehicles or research whatsoever. But being able to helicopter from this to anywhere in the world would be amazing. Because right now, the only way we get out the map is we step out the front door into, into hell. I'll be honest, I don't know what to do now. I didn't think we'd make it this far. Um... I guess a lab. Advanced fung upon its basin. Oh, that's fun. Oh, shit. Okay, well, we could look into that later. A lab? I mean, a lab seems the right call and the highest priority. The problem is the only rooms we've got to build labs in are very, very smelly. Let's get a bathroom. That's what we need. A bathroom, some showers, some, some running water that isn't out of a heavily polluted well. We've got the water treatment facility right here. It's got a thousand watts stored. We just need to tap it. Does it also pump the water then? Uh, pipe pump ground capacity zero liters a day. Okay, so it's just got a thousand liters in it ready to go. So let's put down, uh, I presume we'll need a proper pump in that case. So a water well right there, fine. And then we also need a water pump. So we'll throw in an electric one that can run off the geothermal generator. Oh, here's the other thing, right? This thing, it, it goes through fuel actually quite slowly. Say so it puts out 4,000 watts. But this we have to repeatedly hack. So that's something to keep in mind. This isn't going to just spit out chem fuel once a week. We do have to kind of manually extract it, so to speak, which is fine. It is still 250 chem fuel, which means we've, we're always permanently going to have the power from this and the power from this forever. Cargo pods, hello. Am I going to brave the outdoors for sugar fame warts? Absolutely, I am not. And just like that, 250. Oh, then we have to manually open it afterwards, but that's 250 more chem fuel. If we were to get a vehicle from somewhere, um, that's not me deconstructing it, by the way. Someone's panicking about that. If we were to get a vehicle from somewhere, it's like a total game changer, right? And maybe we leave this broadcast station until the day that we get a vehicle. That way we go to the other vault, we, we strip it for parts, and we bring it all back in one go. What the hell was that? There's something barking out there. Which is terrible news for both the things barking and the mushroom people. 
Oh, it's a Manhunter pack. What the hell is it? Wait. Oh, go back. What, what, what did I see that? Oh, there it is. Arctic Coyote. It's a whole pack of them. Had Chef Will dragged the master bed from the polluted area down here so he could sleep a little closer to Mariana. In this rundown, pre-soiled bed. We'll fix it up at some point. It'll be lovely. The other thing I'm doing is dividing it up so they all have separate bedrooms. No longer are these moods at the minimum, okay? No longer is every bar down to 0%. These people are going to start to live happy, damn it. Well, except for Mariana. But she'll be happy very soon. I thought very briefly what we need to do is shore up the defenses. Because this concerns me. That the fact that all that's standing between us and the entire horde is a flimsy granite wall that's almost destroyed. I, we don't need a door out. I'm not going to build a door out. Instead, we're just going to put down some embrasures. We're going to make it so that when inevitably this door smashes down and they get through, we have a way to, uh, to, to somewhat defend ourselves. Now, I put these turrets in this room just to keep an eye on things to fill out the fog of war. I think they're a bit more useful actually being turrets, if you don't mind. That was like a temporary thing just so that we could see what we're doing, get things tidied up a bit better. But this is... We've been here a long time. We, we, we are overdue a raid. Obviously, the last one was picked off by the very, very hungry horde. But if we're raided by the horde itself and they start smashing down doors, there's nothing we can really do there. Oh, my God. Consuming Arctic Coyote dead. Oh, they did hunt all of those Coyote then. Hello. Consuming Arctic... Oh, God, look at them all. Did you see them just mine through that wall to get to the body quicker? That is horrible. Okay, yeah, why are you doing that, though? Enemy Thrasher. Oh, so this is, this is a raid. Wait, was that a raider that went through there? No, it wasn't. Okay, uh, hey, Chef Will, Timon, if you don't mind. Oh, my God, that was great timing. Holy shit, that was great timing. I mean, we were, we were ready a little while ago. How many of them are there? Five, at the very least. Not to mention the rest of the horde that we're probably going to drive berserk as well. Oh, shit. Well, that was sensible. Oh, my God. They're going through those embrasures like they're not even there. Hello. How are you doing? Kill him, squad. Tim, can you not see? Oh, my God. He's got no ammo. Shit. Okay. It's okay. Chef's got it. Chef Will's got it. Watch out for the rot stink. Oh, God. These embrasures aren't lasting long, are they? Fuck, what incredible timing. Yeah, let's build some embrasures in case we're attacked. After 8,000 hours, you get a... You get a RimWorld sixth sense. What can I say? Oh, the stinks coming through the embrasure holes. Hey, maybe maybe patch those up. Have we got any uranium? Can we build this out something more durable? No, we can't. We do have some ammo somewhere? Is it outside of the map? Uh, no, he's right there. Hey, uh, Timon, let's go eject all the ammo from all of these rifles. Nothing in there. There's something in the flintlock that we can use. What is that? Oh, they're bashing like random structures. But I swear that... Oh, look, and they're coming over attacking the ones that we've downed. Oh, this is vile. We've just given them a free meal. And now the hive mind are attacking the wild ones. I didn't think this would ever happen. I don't understand why it's happening, to be honest. The wild people don't attack one another. They'll eat each other if they're downed. And these ones are going butt wild. I think we're getting sapped. Oh, you just came through there, just like that, huh? They're ruining my tunnel. They're ruining my tunnels. They're digging through. Okay, this embrasure went from, like, the last line of defense to the only line of defense very bloody fast. Jesus Christ. I mean, you're going to have to take over for a little while. Poor Chef, if he stands on this front line anymore, he's going to be exhausted. Okay, let's get you refueled very quickly, and let's get you out there. The turrets can probably deal with it. Am I going to risk that? Absolutely not. Oh, we need some sort of escape. Because if they get in the front door, what do we, we... We die? Can we load people into the... We can, but how does that work? Is that like a game over if we launch them in an ancient supply slingshot? I don't know how that works. Let's see if these turrets are paid for themselves. Thank you, turrets. Hello there. Erica Tremble. Come on. We're going to have to put repair into the highest priority. Because these embrasures are all that's standing between us and just, just getting totally overrun. Bear in mind, the second this door opens, all of the passive ones, all of the, the, the wild people, so to speak, the non-hive mind fungoids, they're just going to swarm in. Ariana's technically down, so she's a free meal. And of course, we've got quite literally a lot of free meals here. Can lock all the doors, I guess. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, the big downside to the Arctic that we haven't really talked about is, that, is there is no other food. The second any humanoid falls over, there's not predators hunting prey, leaving bodies behind. There's no animals besides those coyote, but we saw what happened to them, right? The second any humanoid is downed, they just descend on them. Now between us and about a meter of embrasures are... 
It's, it's a banquet. A banquet. Not only apparently with the package of other meals that they drop, but then also all of the gore, all of the bodies. Fire weapons are effective against them, aren't they? God, I wish I had Mariana's flamethrower right about now. Can we craft fire weapons? We can make some Molotovs. Shit, maybe that's what we do the research in. Hang on a second, because we've got a lot of chem fuel. Flame thrower. Yes, go. We need biofuel refining. But as I recall, we got a blueprint that gave us a little bit of that, right? It was like 20%. And this junction's sticking out way more chem fuel than we're actually consuming. Standing there and just going flamethrower all in. Seems like an incredible idea. Gas mask, the marine armor, and the flamethrowers is peak aesthetic, too. Peak end of the world aesthetic. A little bit enclave. Well, that is a tremendously big brain idea. If we want to go out there and grab this turret, if we want to go out there and take some stuff apart, because there's a bunch of, like, smart toilets and shit. In fact, speaking of smart toilets and shit, what if we just reinstall them into the base? Give our people some, some smart toilets and power showers and some bathtubs. What if we get that truck set up and how do we bait them out drop a little bit of food by the entrance let them come over and then shoot them from the other side of the embrasures thin out the horde because we, we we have to be able to kill them faster than they can respawn oh oh and this is exactly why how far away is it because if it's only a few tiles we, we'll, we'll book it over there oh it's more than a few tiles oh hello they're not that far away and what the hell is that i wonder but i love the hidden world map Holy shit, this is cool. We've got an ancient complex nearby that might be worth going to have a look at. Just some, just, just a, a kind of standard room room one where we might get some artifacts or something like that. Yeah, I mean, if we could just get a few flame weapons. I'd feel so much safer about exploring, but there's no reason we couldn't just get out there right now. Problem is, if we leave the vault unattended and have a door that someone could smash down, does that mean Mariana's in, in danger? I'm worried without someone here. Oh, well... Oh, come on. Oh, you were so strong for so long, and now you've just... You've, you've done a thing like this. I suppose he's gonna let off steam. You know, we've been here first... We, we, we've been out there on the road for so long. These people have been suffering. Speaking of suffering, we're out of steel. Um... Piss. Oh, piss. Oh, piss. Uh, what if we build... Hold on, I've got an idea here. It's called an electric smelter. We slap one of those down, get the steel chunks moved over here instead. I'm going to have to take about one or two things to fund this, but that's okay, because we'll, we'll, we'll get the steel back. 170 steel. Uh, I'll just take this apart. We don't need the dining room table for the time being. I mean, there's plenty of steel outside if you're feeling brave. Gun down a few. The problem is, we also don't have any steel to make ammo. We can scrounge up enough. This is fine. It's uranium. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Um, What else can I take apart? Have we got enough? 146, for God's sake. Take apart the bathtub. Take apart the bathtub. We'll put it back in a second. You went weeks without a bathtub. You don't need one now. Boom. There we go. There we go. Don't botch it. If you botch it, we're done. Okay. Smell metal from slag. Do forever. That is a game changer. Then we come up to the embrasure. We bait them out. We kill them all. Get out here. Take the point defense turret. I think if we put that behind the embrasure, we're, we're, we're a bit more well defended. I guess quickly sneak out, grab all this steel because there's like a lot outside. Try and take all this stuff apart. What the fuck's going on out there? Something's just killing them over and over and over. I wonder if it's because they've got toxic buildup. So as one of them is killing the other ones, they're dropping down and immediately rotting so they can't eat them. Now we've got the biofuel refining ticked off. It's only a matter of time before I haven't got to worry about what's outside the vault. One of them is so pissed off. It's just constantly killing them. No, 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 look, I figured it out. Minus 18. So over the night time, it's, it's now cold enough because we're so far north, even though it's only fall. It's so cold out there that it's enough to knock them down. So then they're just hunting one another. One falls down, the other goes and eats them. That one falls down to frostbite. Another eats that one. Oh, shit. Let's go outside. Armored door. Armored door, you presume, has got some hit points behind it, right? Maybe we throw down like one like that and then one like that. It's 300 hit points. It's not amazing. It's not amazing, but that'll do. Okay. Okay, where, where have you run off to? Careful out there, Timon. You, my friend, are coming with me right now. Where are we going to put that? I should put it there and then move the doors over. God, this is going to cost a lot of steel. But on the plus side, we should be able to get a good amount more steel. If we, if we also cut into the mountain like that, give our turrets a bit of a wider firing arc. <gasps> okay, 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 okay. Pull back a second, please. What the hell is that? There's also gunfire? 
There must be travelers. There must be a traveling group coming through. Why do I always pick the worst times to try and interact with anything outside this vault? I build the embrasure walls, and in that time, a load of shit turns up. I step outside to grab a bit of steel, and then suddenly there's gunshots on one end and a horde on the other. Now there's a bunch of fresh meat at the front door. Okay, so what if we wait for the wild ones to come over as well, the non-hive mine ones, and we gun those down? Because we'll get enough steel to replace the bullets we spend on this. Time to kill some mushrooms. And I'm sorry, we would save them, but we don't have the facility. Kill that one. Bring it down, please. Bring it down, please, Chef Will. We're taking back control of this map. Let's get some line of sight back. Let's make these turrets more effective. With this out of the way and a permanent turret set up, we can just see outside pretty much all the time. I'm not going to take my eye off of him too much. We're going to have Chef Will throw that other door down very fast because I almost locked them out there for a second. Let's get this sorted ASAP while things are nice and quiet. They're all frozen or eaten or more importantly, gunned down. They're not our enemies. They're people. But it is in this situation, them or us. And we can't help them without any bloody resources to do so, okay? So this is a necessary evil. And with that point defense turret, look at all we can see. So I wonder if their line of sight is based on their actual range. And look at all this shit. Oh my god, a trade caravan died. Okay, industrial ammo, simple meal, primitive ammo we don't really need. Look, industrial technology blueprint, get them all hauled. We've got ship chunks. Let's get those taken. Oh, well, there's only one of them, but fair enough. Oh my god, there's a survivor from a trade caravan. Well, uh, wait, hang on a second. No, they're, they're not a survivor at all. Oh, god. Wait, what has happened there? Why has it become Xenogenes? I don't understand. The more I learn about these fungus people, the less I actually know. Okay, be careful here. You just took that mushroom person's lunch. They're probably going to be pissed. There's still shitloads out here. Let's take this very carefully. Give me those damn blueprints. Give me that map too, because the maps are always helpful. We'll just go ahead and finish that one off. Just go in there and just kill it dead. Look at that one. That's down too. What is it? Frostbite? Look! Oh, this is good. This is good. Get him, Will. Click dash back into the vault with our ill-gotten gains. There are still new ones just passing through. Let's also go grab that ammo quick. Liberate these bathtubs. No more stink. We're beyond that now. We're in charge. Just walk in like you own the place, okay? They got plenty of food. They're not going to bother you. They've already got plenty to eat. Well, <laughs> well, what the hell is this? Let's explore some more of these buildings in case there's any... Ooh, I was going to say steel to scrounge up. Oh my god, it's all bathrooms. What do people do in this game? Am I the only person who's ever played this game who has seen a house before? This is madness. Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in here. And the bathrooms have bathrooms. Oh, look at this. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's an enormous amount of steel and components. Don't get me wrong. Hello? That sounded close. Uh, bat wool. Bat wool? What the freaking hell is bat wool? Okay, now hear me out. We take all of these steel and components that we scrounged up. Maybe a bit more of this naturally occurring stuff too. And now that I moved the turret forward too and got a massive view of the edge of the map, why don't we put all this together put down a big old chain link fence right the way to the edge of the map. Or at least as close as we can get, of course. Is it going to be safe? Probably not. Actually, before we build that, we better check that we can see through it. Oh yeah, we absolutely can. Holy shit. So we take that right to the edge of the map. Now, while all the funguses are doing that little dying thing, we're going to go around and hoover up every last crumb of steel. Every last bloody crumb of steel. You know I'm getting the strangest flashbacks all of a sudden. It's the same damn thrombo. Maybe it's come back for revenge. Don't get me wrong. I think this has been deceptively easy. We did travel up to... I mean, I mean, not intentionally, right? But we did follow the vaults more and more northerly. As a side effect, of course, these guys are going to be a lot less threatening. But the downside is the vault is absolutely freezing. It's minus 30. And even in the rooms where I've got a heater, it's minus 19. All that time spent scrounging up all that steel, I've had to dump directly into heaters just to try and stop everyone from dying horribly. It feels like we haven't really done much besides take apart a few buildings, put down a couple of fences, push the defenses forward. But given that these defenses are potentially all there is between a single hit and Chef Wheel becoming a horrible fungus monster, this is the most important thing we could have possibly done. I want to... Oh, man... I want to try and trim this mountain a little bit more and then bring the entrance even further forward. So take this out of the way. Oh, how much can we chip it back though? Because it's this. Oh no, this is limestone. We're good. We'll finish the fences fast. Then my next idea is uh, another fence. It's another fence to be honest. Put that there so that we can set up transport pods in relative safety. Now these are just are just fences, right? They're, they, they're not barbed wire. The uh, enemies aren't going to take damage or get tangled up on them or anything like that. Do counters and braziers, right? Because we've got line of sight so we can shoot through them too. But 
they are going to keep them on the other side of the fence. They can't climb over them or anything like that. The cheapest way we keep them out of the base. And then after that, if we could get some transport pods, given that we've already got biofuel refining, we've already got a shitload of chem fuel, we can, in theory, if things get into a real emergency, potentially escape. Have like a backup plan in play. And speaking of backup plan, Roffle, an evangelist named Roffle. Welcome. Welcome you are. Thank God you're an actual bloody baseliner this time. Animals, artistic, social, nimble, incapable of violent. Oh my god, look at how many are out here. Oh god, there's still so many. There are so many bodies. Oh my god. There's even more blueprints too. To clarify, the blueprints aren't anything I've set up. It's a mod that randomly adds. I think it's like 1% of people will have a blueprint on them. The problem is when there are hundreds out there. In, well, I mean, we saw the horde yesterday. We saw the horde in the vault before in the city. There are hundreds of them out there. When they succumb to frostbite over and over and over, basically doing the research for us. Maybe this was accidentally enormous brain. Maybe they're all the scientists and all the Imperials, whatever they happen to be, who lived in this vault. Speaking of which, we should probably just go ahead and crack those out fast. Prosthetics research. Oh. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll take that one. Deep wells. Not really so relevant because we don't need that much water currently. Fire suppression. Okay, pretty important when we're in an enclosed space, sure. Basic electronics for a bit of recreation. Modern furniture isn't bad. What are these? Spacer technology blueprints. Oh, shit. We can't use those. No spacer technology. No technology available. Why? Is it because we don't have a multi-analyzer, so it's all locked? Right, and the only ones that are technically not locked by the multi-analyzer, like, for example, the Cure, still requires Vitals 1 and web, which I think requires uh, the multi-analyzer anyway, right? Toxin filtration requires prosthetics, mortars. You can't start doing research without the prerequisites. Okay, we'll just sit on those for a while then. That's fine. And in terms of maps, how many of those have we got? We've got six maps. Helps to have a map. Let's read a few. Uh, we, we've learned about Unanter and Quatsatessun and... Hyonzun, you're just doing this to embarrass me. Oh. Oh. If the maps are stacked, they consume them all at once. Well, I'm calling bullshit on that one. So the better question is, do we learn about anywhere close? Oh. Fascinating. Seahorse Forest right there. Okay. And then we've got the uh, we've got the weary survivors. We've got the hostile survivors over there. Jesus, look at how many of these are. Bunched together. Oh, and look at this too. Mycotic jungle. Yeah, we probably shouldn't go over there. I can't imagine we'll go over there unless we really get into the uh, the, the mushroom curing. What the fuck? What were they doing on Chef Will's bed? Is that someone you know? What? What did you just do on Chef Will's bed? Well, Ruffle, if you're joining us, you're going to have to earn your keep, so to speak. What are we going to even do with someone who's good at animals? I guess we just have you growing crops. I mean, that could help. You could go around repairing. You can't You can't ever fail a repair, after all. Um, other than that, dedicate cleaner. Actually, memes aside, hyper useful, given how stinky this vault gets a lot of the time. Jacqueline Roffle. Marine helmet. That's really useful that you brought that with you. Thank you. Nimble. She hasn't even got much of a backstory. She experienced a religious awakening with eight social. What are we supposed to do with that? I mean, it's an interesting idea. Ruffle did not agree to the hookup. Oh, come on, Timon. You've got work to be doing here. I don't normally care about defense in the majority of the bases, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really fortify this down. A second row with like a ditch, a third row with another different type of fence. We'll put some doors down for our people to get through that aren't... They aren't perfectly convenient. We're not going to use auto doors or anything like that. We still need it to be in such a way that the enemies can't use that to get through instead of, instead of going around the fence, right? Slow but safe for our entrance rather than quick and convenient, I think. Where are you going? Drinking water. What, in the in the field of corpses? Really glad. Gathering gore to stockpile. Do you not have anything better to do? Okay, to be fair, I did put down a stockpile for gore. The benefit to this is it's the furthest part away. In fact, if we put it like... We could put it like here. We can still see them eating the gore from that distance, but it gives us plenty of time to react if they run out of gore and they decide to come for us. Now we need another bedroom. Ah. Uh, okay, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to throw a bed... <laughs> We're just going to throw a bed next to the pipeline junction. What if Ruffle and Timon kissed by the ancient pipeline junction? Oh, Ruffle, Ruffle, what are you doing? Ruffle, what the hell is going on up here? Was she seriously going over to haul the gore? Oh, Ruffle. Oh my god, Ruffle, she's fallen on a, on a pile of corpses. Get her, Timon. It's the bloody frostbite. Of course, everyone else we tailored the clothing to be good at like minus 40. She's the exception. Cloth tribal wear, plain leather overalls. I'll keep her in the vault. 
We don't need her to be exploring all the way out here, especially not with a weapon, or especially being incapable of violence. And thank you, Kai. Now all we need is the flamethrower to put it in. Well, Brothel, what have we learned about jumping into a pile of corpses? Absolute idiot. It's a good job we've got this crypto sleep suspenders. My god, it's like Amazon Prime. Thank you. Now that we've secured the front of the vault, all I think we need is a little more firepower. Literally. And then with that, I think we go back out there into the world. We do a little raiding. Because this vault, we've pretty much exhausted all of the resources. I've hauled every piece of steel slag on the map. We've taken apart all the steel buildings, all of the furniture, everything that we could have possibly scrounged up. That's it. Like, like this is the last of the steel. We're looking at it. Would you look at that? 10th of December. It's been almost exactly a year since we left the city and went out on our big vault journey. It's basically been a year of, of non-stop suffering. Of course, there was plenty of suffering before that. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's nice that now, a year later, after all that struggle on all those potential deaths, dodging danger left, right, and center, we have ourselves a paradise? I mean, it's a heavily polluted vault, and the outside is minus 50. We've very much gone to the extremes of trying to survive here. And it'll work. But it won't work for that many people. I already don't have enough bedrooms for the people we've got. This isn't going to be our end game. This isn't going to be the vault that cures the disease that we're able to put people in storage. There's just not enough room. Lots of people are interested in that enormous vault. Maybe we slowly ramp things up. Maybe we cure Mariana. Maybe we discover how these things really truly work. Figure out a repeatable way to be able to cure them. Then with a big fighting force, we go for a vault like that. We, we try and populate it with... Not really so much a band of survivors desperately struggling, but I feel like a bustling city is more appropriate for a vault that size. We organize ourselves into some sort of umbrella corp for good. We go around and we cure the people and we, we put them back on the right track. We reform them. We launch them into space. Maybe they set up outposts for us. I don't know. I think that's a much nicer idea than just surviving or more specifically just getting to the ship and getting out there. Because now that we're comfortable, we probably could just caravan all the way to the ship and fly off. It's not about winning, okay? It's about doing good. Yesterday we found the vault. Today we've turned this vault into something livable. And tomorrow we leave the vault. We're going to go, not raiding, not raiding with the good guys. We're going to go recycling. We're going to go reclaiming. I probably shouldn't call it a home. It's a barely hospitable shelter out in the freezing cold Arctic Circle. But you know what? In some ways it's safer than that city. Just don't step out the front door. Otherwise you'll instantly die. Thank you to... Oil Bucket, Bomb Time, Tomb Gear, Ox Wrecker, Floofy Prawn, Nabaxterino, Trivy H, The Confined Badger, David Turner, Scott Layton, Bear King, Sakari, Meepsicle, Bryce, Lord, Snarky, Nephine, Atubes, Copilot, Code Kai, Splendid Spleen, Spill, Slighter, and Cuddles for their support today. The executive producer is on our Patreon. Thank you. Uh, more than ever, of course, because of YouTube's aggressive ad and anti ad block policies that they've implemented, not to mention the price of premium increasing, making me forever uncertain of this platform that we have all congregated on. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of the Patreon. I put up a big post on the Discord about not discussing ad blocks and not linking to ad block pages. Uh, you know, obviously I had to include some examples of those links on the Discord um, so people knew not to follow them and use the tools there. So please bear that in mind and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>